does it buy matter? Better buy better players. But does it matter that he's not got a, a football background if he's going to be overseeing this cultural change? <laughs> I mean, I've met him before. He's a lovely guy. He's obviously an intelligent guy, understands sport. There was a few David Brentisms in there, you know, and he talks about the, how you should do things and things like that. Um, but it's easier said than done. My, the big thing is, is that the culture has to change. There's no doubt about that on the pitch. But the big thing is buy better players. So you players. have to give them the environment in which to succeed, which is Not, what he's talking about. You can change it quickly. Changing the mentality change, around You could change it, but the players that have been bought in this period under the, this manager haven't been good enough. He spent big money on players that haven't been successful yet. So that's a, that's a big thing. When Alex Ferguson was here, he bought the best players. So that's why they ended up winning. It helped. But there was also a winning mentality at that time. Wasn't yeah, but it was created by the, by the players and the senior players and created a culture. So a lot of the stuff that goes on in the dressing room and in and around it comes from uh, the players and the manager. I just don't feel that they've done that right now and the players haven't been good enough that they've signed and that's why they've had that period of, of not dominating like they were. There's definitely a capability thing about the players that obviously have been signed, but I had to think over the last 10 years there have been some really good players signed for this club that have failed. And I said a few years ago, it's become a bit of a graveyard. You know, a lot of the players that Manchester United have signed were wanted by other clubs and Manchester United have ended up paying more for them and higher fees, but they've come here and they've not succeeded. So when they have signed players, you know, Harry Maguire was wanted by Manchester City. Now, you're not telling me that if Harry Maguire had gone to Manchester City, he would be viewed like he is now. He'd be a success and he'd be playing, you know, probably 150, 200 games, have three, four titles under his belt. He chose to come to Manchester United. So is that, so, the, is that the threat state, then, he's, that he's talking about with this club, that the shirt is weighing too heavy, there is a fear factor among the players that are putting on that shirt for Manchester United? Is that the bit that needs to change? We need to move forward now because there is a new ownership at the club. But, Dave, if your owners of a business are rotten, then, to be fair, it's going to filter right way down through the club. The thread of the club's going to be rotten. And they've not been present for the last 10 years. They've left people in place that shouldn't have been in place that haven't been capable of running the football side. They haven't even had a sporting director. They haven't had a sort of, if you like, head of recruitment that's prominent. Mm. They've been taking on some of the best outfits in Europe off the pitch in the boardrooms with basically without anyone being there. It's unbelievable what's happened. You think it's been negligence, complete negligence for them just to leave it. I don't know why they've left it, because it's obviously their asset. We talk about recruitment, but any top player out there wouldn't see Man United, I think, at this moment in time, a good option. You wouldn't see it. You see where the club is at. You see the, the, again, we've seen good players come to Man United and have just, whatever the environment's gone on, we use that word culture, whatever's going on, the training ground, the leadership decisions at the top end, whatever about contracts they're giving out and silly money. Players come to the club now. You know, all the best. We've come to a different, env a different I environment. I ask you to a question. So you say the players would think twice about coming here. And what, I, about, what, I, about I, man, what about a manager? So supposing you, there were to be a change, if, the, if this carries on in this manner and they're losing games, who out there? That's the I, thing. Who's going to... Who, who there's, a, there's a problem which we won't go into, which is around FFP and what they can actually spend when they're coming away, because I don't think there's that much money left. But players will either sign for a club or they'll sign for a manager. And that's the big question at this moment in time that Ineos are going to have. Will they sign for the club when they're up against Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool, with all these sort of great teams and managers at this moment in time? I think Roy's right. I think they would choose other clubs. So what do they do then? Do they then rely upon Eric Ten Hag to be the attraction for those top players? And with what's happened in the last few months with the players that have signed, that's where I think the vulnerability comes from with the current manager. Because the, the way in which to attract, I think, players to this club next season will be through a manager rather than through the actual club state. They're going to want to see a bit I'm more proof. I'm amazed you say that, because it's still... Well, I've, said for years, I've said for years, if, you, if you're a player and you still have a choice to sign for... If you have a chance to sign for Man United, go for it. But my mind has changed definitely over the last couple of years and that. Really? I think you're yeah, the top player. I, I've spoken to a couple of players before they've come here and said you'll never regret it. It's a magic football club. But I have to say, looking back, it looks like pretty poor advice with what's happened to them since they've come. And it's really sad because they would have thrived at other clubs and other, other players that have chosen other clubs have gone on to be really successful. You know, you think of Jude Bellingham and I, I think of that sort of quite a lot. When he walks into the boardroom here at Manchester United, Manchester United have agreed a fee with Birmingham and so have Dortmund. And he has a choice between Borussia Dortmund and Manchester United. And somehow that kid, well done to him, chose Borussia Dortmund. Mm. And he's now one of the greatest players in the world and one of the greatest English talents. What would have happened to him if he'd come here? I don't know. Maybe he would have been a success because he's that good. But I'm not so sure in the current environment and culture and what's been happening.